You're listening to ZenAF.TV, which is more than just... God damn it, Wayne. Hello and welcome to Zen AF Podcast. We are your hosts, Alex Scooby and Wayne Hanna. And you know, it's funny, um, when you hear this episode, episode 19, uh, it will be five days till Christmas. So this is uh, kind of our Christmas episode. Also, oh, Christmas tree, tree. Alex, keep. And so here we go. And uh, and I have a little song I'd like to. uh, Christmas is coming. The goose is getting fat. Please put a nickel in Wayne's butt crack. Also, today, a roll of quarters. (laughs) Awkward silence. So here's the thing. Um, Today uh, is now again, you're going to hear this on a Monday, I think the 20th. Somewhere around there. Uh, Today, the day we're recording, is Wayne's 42nd birthday. Happy birthday, Wayne. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday birthday to you. Happy Happy birthday, dear Wayner. Wayner. Happy birthday to you. You're welcome. You know what? I just want to, I just want to, I just want to say to everybody out there out there that's listening um thank you for the i've been getting smoked with birthday wishes both on the zen af dot tv instagram with like fan art lindy and cosmos moms and like all the walking the fear of the walking dead um fan mm-hmm, world mm-hmm. um i feel so fucking loved they're great people, aren't they? It's, aren't, it, I mean, but yeah, did you see the yeah. one of me Ar- as Arnie Finkelstein naked well, on yeah, the I, cow? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm the one who reposted it. I'm the one who posted the picture of you this morning. I'm the one who started the mayhem. Yeah, well, this is mayhem, and it's super appreci- appreciated mayhem. And thank you, everybody. It's really it, nice um, when all of the people in the world that I don't know wish me a happy birthday course i mean yeah i mean what what's better than uh not knowing any really uh any of them but knowing that they have your back i mean that's fucking amazing i fucking love it i love it i love it yeah. and to the people that i do know thank you i've had what a day what a day so far that's so good man I've that's so great day you know it's uh, it's wild uh when this uh, this is another big thing so when this episode airs we will be exactly four months to the day of our first published podcast four months oh yeah because the what was it the 18th of something it was the 19th of august so uh yeah so it'll be the 20th of december so just you know to the day maybe it'll give or take uh 12 hours but yeah very exciting and uh by the way guys you know what wayne wants for his birthday and we both want for christmas and actually i want for my birthday because i'm the 27th of december uh we would love for you to subscribe wherever that may be uh, iTunes, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Google, Amazon Music, wherever the, wherever the hell you listen to this wonderful, beautiful, th- these sounds that we create for you, uh, just go ahead and click subscribe. Yeah. Love us up. I think that, I think that it would, well, the more people that tell people, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, and the more people that subscribe, it just, um, it gets us closer to our goal of 3 billion um, subscribers. Three billion is all we ask for. If we can get to three billion subscribers, God, this sounds like like a uh, one of those uh, phonathons. Telethon, a telethon. That's <laughs> what, what I telethon, thought. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, whoa, whoa that's kind of what we need to do. <laughs> I want to so, talk uh, about something. Yeah, do it, man. Bring it. And we don't talk about this. Well, we're gonna. But we're gonna talk about this because you're supposed to be coming here on for the show in January. That's correct. Um, that is now up in the air because the world is once again being prepared for whatever it is. Omicron. Omicron. Yeah. Yeah. So, Omicron virus. Uh, yeah. Also mm. known as Stinkle Ball. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't anticipate this thing getting worse i think it's just the world getting ready just in case like i i keep comparing it to about four years ago there was the possibility of this massive snowstorm in boston and mm-hmm. they had like parking lots filled with 
out of state snow plows, I think, and it, they just were going oh, yeah. balls to the wall ready for this thing, and it blew over. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's what they're going to find out about this, but shut everything down before it it gets out of hand. That being said, it might hinder you coming up here, which is fine because we'll figure something out. I know. See, so I am I'm I'm getting my brain is kind of melting right now. You know, plus it's like I wanted to get out of the holidays before I start like looking at flights and stuff, which is fine. I don't have no problem doing that. Um, but you know, getting out of the holidays, that's going to be in like a week and a half, two weeks, whatever that is, and then all of a sudden we're in January. We're in 2022. Happy New Year to everyone coming up, by the way. I'm sure you'll hear of us from us again before that. But my thing is with with Omicron, it's like Omicron. I'm just kind of like Omicron. And then like California now is going back to the full mask mandate and staying indoors unless you have to and possibly closing down, blah, blah, blah. And it's like I'm going to be in L.A. I'm going to be rehearsing for that, that play. So it's like I don't know what's going to – you know what? I can't read the future. I have no idea. And I hope you're right that this just kind of blows, blows away. I'm just saying in case I don't know. You know, and I, I want to come out there desperately. I want to come see the show. Shit, I'd even be part of it. But it's like I just um, I just got to figure it out. I mean, that's all. Just play it by ear. That's so it. we we had a meeting last night. You can't actually be a part of the show. That's fine. Either way, I'll sit in the no, audience. No, Ty- our producer, Tyler, because I was mm-hmm. like, well, I'd like Alex to host. And he goes, yeah, that would be wonderful. However, Alex mm-hmm. is a union entertainer. And if Mm -hmm. you get caught hosting, being a union member, one, you're working in Canada, two, you're you're supposed to be paid under SAG. Like there's a whole bunch of stuff that you fall under because we're making a film out of this. We're filming a documentary, so it'll be in the film. And it's non-union. It's (laughs) that's true. Yeah. 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 Interesting, but I mean, you know, uh, there's ways around that. I mean, there's there's ways around that. But I, you know, again, it's like. Look, I'd be more than happy to just, uh, you know, ridicule you from the audience. I don't care. So, I mean, but so, yeah, so we got to figure that out. We got to we got to figure it out. And, I, and again, like I said, let's get out of the holidays. It's coming up. Boom. Yeah. I still would still have three weeks to get a ticket, all that stuff. So let's just, you know, I'm not worried about it at all, man. Like I was saying the other day, I was saying last night, actually, I said, I can't be stressed out about a show about not being stressed out yeah. like, what the- <laughs> <laughs> i'm getting ready for this show where i got to talk about mindset and a positive mindset and anxiety and not going into a rabbit hole but yet <laughs> there i am getting ready for this show freaking the fuck out and losing my mind and having panic attacks so i've been really yeah. good at keeping my shit together <laughs> but my daughter bought me the coolest birthday present she bought me this leather oh, bound yeah. this leather bound notebook that smells love like- it McDonald's. McDonald's vegan leather. What does this say here on the back? Did you hear? Have you heard about vegan leather? Yeah, I've heard about it. It's just, I don't know how to think anymore. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. What is vegan leather even? Like, what is it made out of? That means it's not, I don't think it's from a cow. I think it's from like, they take, you know what they do? They take plastic straws, melt them down, uh, tan them, and then like beat the shit out of them until they're soft like leather. That's a shiv. That's a prison shiv. I always get those confused. Vegan leather and prison shiv. It's like those two things I never get right. I think they're made out of the same thing, if you ask me. Shivs and vegan leather? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Soy. It's all soy-based. <laughs> I'll tell you this right now. Um, if, if, if through the dating world, uh, a vegan lady said to me, Wayne, I want to date you, I would say no. Really? Yeah. Really? You'd go, I, you'd go no with that. I would date somebody who's vegetarian. Now, listen to me. It's not coming from a shallow place. It's coming from... Well, it kind um, of is, but go ahead. No, it's not at all. If you think about it, being a vegan is a fundamental thing for somebody, right? So if I'm mm-hmm. sitting there gnawing on a ribeye, well, they're, mm-hmm. you know, having, like, anxi- anxious moments that I'm not doing them any favors. No, and I get it. I get that. I can't. I- I mean, I could eat less meat. I'm I'm good with that, but I can't I can't go full vegan. Well, I'll tell you, you know, my uh, my 
better half uh, stopped eating meat um, seven years ago. Oh my God, was it that? I don't know. I think six, seven years ago, something like that. And I, at first, I was angry and upset. And then I kind of just got used to it. And now I kind of like take bigger bites while I stare at her. Uh, that kind of thing. And, but she doesn't care anymore. So, you know. So I will say this, um, ladies and gentlemen that are a part of our podcast, I think it is very important that you know that when Alex eats something that he enjoys, he's very <laughs> vocal about it. It's mm. it's almost orgasm. Yeah, it's almost orgasmic. We ordered tacos mm. from this amazing taco place. Um, oh, ta- Taco Del Taco or something. No, like that. it was Velvet Taco. The Velvet, Velvet Taco. The Velvet. Velvet Taco. Yeah, because <laughs> that's yeah. not the dirtiest name in the world. Yeah, well, it's actually pretty s- soft. And anyways, we ordered from the Velvet Taco, mm-hmm. and every bite that he took, he needed. Mm. Oh. Oh my god. Oh, oh man. It's so oh. good. Oh, oh every fucking I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to eat um taco el pollo, which is um French for chicken tacos. And That's not I have French. I That's had not, half okay. an erection. Yeah, well because I was moaning. Mm-hmm. Which was the weird part, but it was only half, so it doesn't count. Yeah, you can't put that in anything. It's still like a floppy fucking uh, chorizo, you know. Here we go. My dad. <laughs> my dad is. Don't one don't of the- talk about a sloppy, wet little dick, and then your dad in the same sentence. Don't be like floppy dick. My dad. So my father um, looked at me as a young man and said, "Son, when I can't get it up anymore, I'm going to divorce your mother and marry somebody younger." So they could stand on their head and I can just drop it in. Awkward silence. Wow. That's what that, your dad said? Yeah, not even I like. Mean, I kind of like him more and I didn't even know that I, I, I never met him, but I like him more now. Because that takes, first of all, that takes imagination. Okay. To even think that visual. And I'm proud of him for vocalizing it. It's also taken me therapy to forget that visual. I'm positive. <laughs> that's that's my dad. That's my dad. That's funny, man. And if that's you knew funny. my dad, you would go. You wouldn't say something like that, but he he did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to meet him, and uh, maybe uh, I could stand on my head. Okay, listen to me. It is time for one word answer for right Wayne's now? birthday. We've got a, we got a special one. We got a special oh, one. I have to get Jesus. to it because I'm excited about it. Here we go. It takes two, 22 seconds. Here we go. Here's the headline for Wayne's brilliant one word answer. Here we go. Camel beauty contest rocked by Botox scandal. Tell. Perfect answer. He wins every time. Toe. Toe. Camel. No. Toe. Camel. Fist. No. The fist. Oh. What? The fist of it. No. See, now people are taking this out of context. I'm literally saying a camel's toe, and you're all going to. Oh, no, you're not. Don't start with that shit. I'm literally saying a camel's toe. I'm shocked that, that, you know, 79% of our audience are. These powerful um, women and you guys let your minds go to a dirty place. Well, Alex and I are just sitting here trying to play an innocent game, innocent around game. the Christmas holidays, and you around the Christmas holidays took it to the next page. Took it to the next page. Let me ask you a question: What are you doing for Christmas, Wayne? What are you going to do? You have to working. work. You're working on Christmas Day, but you have you. So you're going to have Christmas Eve, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's fun. Uh, we over here are going to do it, you know, are alone, me and my, my wife and I, and then I, I we may go to uh, someone's house for, like, uh, dinner or something. I'm not sure if that's going to happen yet. I'm, I'm not positive. Um, but I tell you what I did do today. I went to the post office, and I mailed my daughter a box of gifts that also contains my son's gifts also. And 
there was no one at the post office and I was just out of my mind. Just, just, I couldn't believe there was no one there. I walked in, shipped the box, no problems here in Austin. Now, if I had done that in Los Angeles, like I have the previous 11 years shipping them Christmas gifts, it had been a line an hour and 20 minutes long. By the time I got there, I'd have been irate, out of my mind, ready to uh, kill someone for Christmas. You know what's funny is there I've been seeing a lot of stuff come out, like documentary-wise, especially on YouTube, because there's a ton of shorts and stuff on YouTube now. Mm-hmm. But of like, and I just saw this one advertisement for it. I haven't watched it, but I'm gonna check it out. And it's like a real look into Los Angeles and what it's actually like. And I and I believe that it doesn't show the very like everybody's mentality. Well, not everybody's, but there are a lot of humans on this planet that when they think of L.A., they think of Hollywood and the stars mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. the studios. And um, yep. it's not like that at all, is it? Well, that that is a very small, contained part of, of Los Angeles. So L.A. is one of the biggest. I look at L.A. as a, a giant suburb rather than a city, right? So L.A. is so sprawling, Los Angeles County. So Hollywood and the studios, they're in like a very kind of, I mean, they're not extremely close together, but they're all kind of contained in a, in a you know, a, a radius um, but L.A. County is gigantic, and a lot of L.A. is, uh, I'm not a fan, really, of Los Angeles anymore like I was. I, maybe we, I've mentioned this on here before, but I am not. Like I like I said, if I could live here full-time in Austin, I would. Um, and I think after I, I do this play, depending, uh, I might come back here and just stay. Um, you know, because I don't miss Los Angeles. Now, I miss some people in Los Angeles. I miss some, some of my friends out there. Uh, and I miss, you know, some of the restaurants, just stuff like that. But, uh, but I'm good with not going back to LA anymore. I'm good. Unless it's work, unless I book a gig or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. I, um, I, I'm, I love Austin and I've only spent four days there, so I can see it. It just feels more when there's not weird shit happening. Um, it mm-hmm. feels more like artsy fartsy and peaceful and stuff like that. I think it's time that we learn about Canada for a bit. I want to learn about Canada. I want to learn about Canada. Canada with Wayne. Canada. All right, Alex. Today's lesson's a special one. Okay. I'm going to talk to you about um, Canada and. I don't want to go through all of the provinces. So we have provinces. Yeah, I know all and of them. territories. Yeah. Okay, what are they? Uh, Give me four provinces right now. Uh, Quebec. Okay. Uh, Ontario. And tell me something special about Oh, them. now you're adding shit to it. Let me just get through these first, dick. Okay. All right. Quebec. Um, Ontario. Mm-hmm. Uh... Eastern, eastern, eastern side, which would be, which would be, hold on, hold on, Vancouver ish area. That's west. West coast. That's what I said. You can go back and rewind it if you want, people. I'm always right. And then you have the fourth one, which is north. Pretty smart. Okay, how many did I get right? Wow. Two. Okay, great. That's fucking great. Two, you got one right because I live there. Okay. And you got the other one right because we talk about it every second episode. Okay. Which ones did I get wrong, though? All of the rest of them. Okay, so let's go through them. Okay, so we're going to start on the West Coast. That would be Vancouver. (laughs) Well, Vancouver is the city inside the province. Of? So that would be like British Columbia. British Columbia. And the thing about British, British Columbia, Columbia that, that is, is where, where they nope, no, nope, we're not we're, we're not, not doing this. Oh. What? British Columbia. British is known for hippies. What's up? It's known for um, really nice weather. Okay. It's known for skiing. Whistler is there, which is a big deal. Okay. Um, and it's known for its cannabis. 
I mean, it's known for salmon and stuff, but the important things are hippies, mm -hmm. which we love because we're all about our woo woo. Okay. Um, um, it's it, they love Crocs in British Columbia. I have Crocs. And they're they British Columbians tend to be more sweaty, calm, sweaty, cool, chilled, and sweaty. So here's my inter so here is what I think of British Columbia, right? Sweaty hippies high while skiing. That's perfect, actually. Awesome. Perfect. All right, what's the next province? Awesome. Providence. Alberta. Which I knew is that where one. I'm from. I knew that one. And it's known for oils and lifted trucks. So Texas. Mm, I mean, we have yep, oil and lifted that's trucks. That's where the Calgary Stampede. Yep. That, that it would be our version of Texas. And okay. and Albertans, which I am, they do have a twang to the things that they say. Yes. But that's where you Alberta's where the prairies are where you get your your boots and your A. Okay. And oh don't worry about it, bud. We're just gonna go down and do all the things that we like to do, eh? Yeah, we're gonna go That's not a romantic dialect. No, it's not romantic, but their trucks are lifted. I'll tell you what, here's what I think of Alberta people now. Ready? Mm -hmm. Is this. They walk like their shoes on fire. Yeah. Yeah. No, I had to think, okay. I had to think about it All for right. a second. Moving yeah, on. I'm moving on this. east. All right. We're moving east. Now we're in Saskatchewan. East Coast. Now we're moving. We're in Saskatchewan. Oh, I know that one. Go ahead. And then we have Manitoba. Perfect. And then we have Ontario. Sweet. And Ontario is where I live. And that's where, like, yes. that's, it's like, it, Ontario is just a really big province with a lot of people. Okay. And what do you, what are they known for? Like chocolate whistles and like a, and some kind of like shit. Beef, I don't even beef know. Jerky with like a light beer. Ontario. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because is known. Yeah. With um they got some stuff. Well, yeah, Canada's like, capital. Canada's capital is in Ontario. That is Toronto. No, Ottawa. And I am getting tired. I'm getting physically tired from this conversation about the provinces in Canada. Just remember what I taught you. Say you're sorry. You're the one who brought it up. I know, and I regret it. But I'm saying good things about these places. No, I understand, but you're here for four days, and that, that you don't need to know all this stuff. About it is Canada. ridiculous. It's it's actually over the top. Listen, <laughs> it's cold. We apologize for everything, and we're really, really, really picky with this whole pandemic-y stuff, which I will say this. We, we are literally creating a global pandemic from a global pandemic. This shit that we are going yeah. through is messing with people's mental health. Uh, I, we're so far into it now. So this is a good topic to talk about for a minute. We're so far into this thing now. What? It's two years, over two years, almost two years, right? People aren't mm -hmm. right. They're not. They're, people are getting fucked in the head. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could see it on people's faces. I mean, you could see it on mine. We're, we're all just kind of looking at each other like, is this... Is this real still? You know? Yeah. Like, at what point? At what point do we say, um, no, we're done. We've done our part. Like, how yeah. many? I have I know, man. I know. It's like you go to the store. We went gro uh, grocery shop. We went Christmas sh uh, shopping last night. Did a little stuff. Got a few ditties. And it was like, I'd say 50% of the people are wearing masks. At this store we're in, department store, the other oh, the other ones weren't. Everyone's looking at each other like, "What the fuck? Should, should I wear? A, should I put my? Should I put my mask on or should I take it off? I don't know what I should do. I don't know what's happening." And everyone is like, and people are short tempered, and you know, usually with the holidays, people are anyway. But you add a pandemic to it, we're still in it. It's you know, no one knows what the fuck to do anymore. I, uh, if I didn't have to wear a mask, I would not wear a mask. Me neither. Me Done. neither. I wouldn't either. Done. However, yeah. when um, 
when there are people in our lives that we care about that would like us to we do it because that's just what you do for peace of mind um but when it's when when it's the people that want you because i had a lady come up to me two weeks ago maybe not even two weeks ago i had my mask under my nose and she's she was not pleasant to me really excuse me sir put your mask on properly and i was just like "Mm, mm, mm, no we're gonna carry on and that is what it's coming down to it's coming down to people literally being vigilante with their opinion yeah like stop being a vigilante with your opinion keep your opinion to yourself and i'm not saying it from a negative place i don't care what you do i don't care how you i didn't care before this and i don't care now yeah you know but Let's just fucking do what we have to do so we can get through this thing because yeah. it's it's not going to stop until we do. Because their heels are dug in now all over the world. I don't know. I don't even want to. Yeah. And, you know, here's the thing. It's like we're, we're, we're just we're not. Look, we didn't we didn't handle it right in the first place. America didn't. Anyway, I'm, I'll just speak for the United States of America. We didn't handle it right in the first place. Uh, we had we had someone running the country who was a total fuck nut, and now we're so far gone with it that now everyone's just got their mind made up. They're either not going to get vaccinated, they are going to get vaccinated, they're not going to wear a mask, they never have, they're going to wear a mask, but fuck, blah, 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 but no one's on the same page. So here we are. Happy holidays, everyone. My my my. You know? When I got my booster a couple weeks ago, yeah. the nurse offered to put it in my bum. No way. I would. I, I thought, wanted that. I. I thought I'm like this is headway if you ask me. Like having a nurse that knows what I want right off the bat, having a nurse that that cares Are, about my arm enough to put it in my butt. Well, she also must have been listening to the podcast because butt play, butt play, not the same kind of butt play. Like two different jams. I'm into two different jams. But I really think at this point in your life, especially being older now at 42, you'll take it any way you can get it. And if it's a finger, if it's a needle, if it's the I I think I might be on my way out with the thing. Like I think I might have to put it to rest. I think I might have to move on to other kind of erogenous zones. Yeah, well, especially if they're a health scare. Ladies, listen. If you're in a serious relationship, <laughs> if you're in a serious relationship, there is a good chance that your partner wants you to um, go fiddly dicking with his uh, with his bottom. Just letting you know. Well, what if they already know it's, that? It's I mean, science. I mean, unless well, that is science. Well, then, it is science. Yeah, it is. Um, it is science. Um, speaking of science and um, prostate play. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I just want to let you know that when you guys listen to our podcast, mm-hmm. it's very helpful to us to receive your feedback. So please like us and rate us and comment on all of the things we speak of and give us um, we, we also love uh, receiving um, feedback on like what you'd like to see us change or take out of it. We're not going to listen to you. No. But what I'm saying is it's still nice to have that there. Yeah. And, and I'm going to piggyback off of what Wayne just said, because I couldn't agree more. Is, you know, if you're on if you're on iTunes, you know, Apple Podcasts, if you're on Spotify or, or any of the other massive platforms out there for podcasts, go ahead and, you know, click how many stars you think we should get and leave it, you know, like he just said. Five. Five. It's not just it's not just social media we speak of, ladies and gentlemen, because social media is just kind of in a smaller kind of ri- but it's the podcast platforms is where we're talking about. That's all. You know? The social media side of it's just for the for for media. That's what it's, it's social media. Yeah, social. Um, where where we'll where we will get um, seventeen billion followers. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Sorry, I'm manifesting. Yes. Uh, is is through <laughs> re, is through the reviews on all of the platforms. And speaking of the platforms, Alex, I switched to Spotify. You switched to Spotify. Yeah, man. You like it better than iTunes? Yep. Really? I sure do. Why? What's the di- What's the difference? I, I don't know everything. I feel like it's just, it's just, I just really like Spotify. I don't know what, I liked a thing about Apple. There was a thing about Apple that I really liked, but mm-hmm. Spotify just has something that does it for me. It just moves a little bit more, you know, like it just shakes a little bit better. It just, 
sounds a lot greater. So, okay, let me ask you a question, because now, are you talking about streaming music and podcasts and everything like that, or are you talking about everything across the board? Oh, Alex, I've never listened to a podcast in my life. Me neither. Literally. I just threw that out there. I've ever listened to is ours. Yeah, Um, I know. See, I feel bad saying it, but it's true. Go ahead. It is true. I've also never read a book, but I'm writing one. I mean, like, it doesn't... What? um, Wait. Sorry? You know, that's that's ridiculous. Anyways. Go ahead. You're you're ridiculous. No, that's ridiculous, ridiculous, Wayne. You've never read a book, but you're writing one. Ridiculously. I'm writing a book. Wayne, listen to me. I want to hear all about your book at some other point. But here's the thing. When you say Spotify, you mean streaming music, right? Yeah, I mean music. I've, that's what I've been trying to talk about. You keep changing the subject. No, I never have changed the subject once in this entire podcast life. Episode 19, I've never changed it. Well, it doesn't feel like that to my brain. My brain feels like you're all over the place. Like, I just want you to take a second and take a deep breath and relax. Now we're fighting. <laughs> Focus is not focus is an art. Yeah, believe I me, I'm a hundred. I've yet. got a hundred. I got a hundred in that class. So I use Pandora. You liar. I use Pandora because I like it better than uh, iTunes. I like it better than uh, I've tried Spotify. I like Pandora. It's got more of a. I like the art on it or something. I like the different. I don't know. Just the colors. I have no idea why. I don't know. I don't think we have Pandora in Canada, so that's not even an option for me. Why wouldn't it be? Because it's just an app. I mean, are they not allowed I, in Canada? I don't understand that. There might be copyright stuff. I don't. Mm, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. You know what? I it I, there's like there's a lot of little red tape. There's a lot of red tape when it comes to these streaming platforms, man. Yeah. This fucking it's it's insane. Do you remember shit like um, what were those um. Like Napster. Oh, my God. Yeah. We used to, like, yeah, oh, download yeah. and burn CDs. And, like, everyone in the music business was like, we're getting fucking music stolen from us. Remember that? That the people were, like, stealing yeah. music constantly. I felt, I kind of felt for them back then because I was like, wow, like, so record sales back in the day, like the 80s, like, they, they were making hand, money hand over fist. You cut to, like, late 90s, 2000s, it's like, People are just 99 cents a st- song or free, right? They're just kind of pirating it off off the internet. That was a whole big fucking thing, wasn't it? So how are they making money now? Is it from concerts? Because they're not even doing those really anymore. Like how, how do they, how do singers and music, this is why I'm not a musician. Well, it's all from it's shows. So it's always convoluted. been, so musicians have always made in, in, from my knowledge, which is very little of the music industry, I've always heard. That, like, say, Billy Joel went and did, you know, 50 shows in a year, and he sold out Madison Square Garden and, you know, everywhere else. That's where the majority of his, or the some bulk of his money would come from. Record sales, especially within the last, like, 15, 20 years, have kind of moved over to streaming. Let's say 15 years, over to streaming. So it, it kind of changed the whole name of the game. And from what I understand, bands, musicians had to hit the road a little more and and to make up for that that kind of uh, financial downfall. But, you know, again, a lot of these people that we're speaking of or that I'm thinking of were fucking loaded. I mean, just loaded, you know. Listening to you speak Mm -hmm. is honestly like I'm watching the world's greatest documentary on television. You're just so full. Sorry, I'll read what you told me to read. You, (laughs) Alex... You are full of knowledge and your (laughs) eloquent way of saying these things has always put me in a place. You read like a fourth grader. God damn it, Wayne. Put it together like you're you're really saying it. Your writing writing is fucking atrocious. You Uh, know what, Wayne? That wasn't in there. My writing is actually, actually, you want to talk about handwriting. I won awards. No, you have not. For handwriting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, they yeah, say like it's like a calligraphy award. Yeah. People were like, you. Oh, we want Alex to write everything from now on. I don't believe a fucking word that you're saying. Don't write that in your calligraphy. Miss calligraphy notebook. Calligraphy notebook. Notebook. I... Hey, um, you know what else you've won awards for? Don't tell them. 
don't tell them. Do you want to know what else you've won awards for? Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Scooby has also won awards for his dating advice. I'd like to now introduce to you Dr. Alex, relationship coach and love guru to the stars. Thanks for having me. Hey, hey, Wayne, you're back. Been here this whole time. You're back. What's oh, we're, it's a skit. It's a skit. But real, but but heartfelt. Heartfelt skit. Here, I do have a serious relation. I want your opinion on okay. something. All right, let's do it. So I have a buddy of mine, right? And this is a legit buddy. Recently single, entering back into mm -hmm. the dating world after a long marriage and relationship with his now ex-wife. How long? They've got a couple. Uh, how long were they together? Yeah. Over a decade. Okay, Easily so that's, over a decade. that's a good yeah, time. Under that's a good chunk. 15 years. Yeah, a good chunk of their adult life, like their 20s into their late 30s, probably 15 years. Okay. However, they their arrangement is still very much um, co-parenting, and they're living in the same home, but they're getting it up. Ooh, so they're stop. Wait a second. So that I know about this kind of stuff. I've seen it. I've 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 heard about it. So when you are and they're divorced. So not yet. No. So they're just separated now. And that's what I want to say. Like, even after my, we, we stayed living together for three or four more months while we were waiting for the house to close and stuff like that. But like they okay. are that. So where I'm going with this isn't their situation where I'm going with this is that he is now entering back into the dating world. And because okay. he's entering back into the dating world, he's, you know, he's a good looking guy. He's got a great career. He's, you know, he's in shape. He's, like on paper, he looks fantastic. However, you know 100% that that human being is so far from being healed, it's ridiculous. But now that he's out in the dating world, I had a conversation with him about telling these women the truth and putting it all out there. So here's my question, Dr. Alex. Mm -hmm. Do you think that a human being should keep some of that stuff to themselves like it's too much info or should they put it all out on the table when you start dating well i'm gonna answer this question because it's actually hilarious that you just said that okay so what i think is this you divulge as much much information that you are comfortable with diverging until the person that you are dating is someone that you know in your heart that it's either going to go further and you can trust this person uh, or not. Because if you're literally going on a date and divulging all your information within a couple dates, you know, especially if it's, you know, there's personal stuff. Now, logistically, like he's living with his his wife. They're not divorced yet. They're separated. That's kind of a red flag for some people. It is. Because if he starts dating someone and they kind of start digging on him and he's still under the same roof with his still wife, not ex-wife, I, I don't, I see, I, I, you know, if that was reverse and that was a woman and it was me dating this woman who's still living with her husband that I find out, I'd call it off immediately. I would not, I would not even go there at all. Um, the funniest part about what you just said on another note is this. You asking that question is hilarious because in the play I'm about to do, my character's issues with dating was that I always went into a first date and said every dysfunctional thing that's ever happened to me on the first date. And that's why no one stuck around. So th you just asked the most, uh, in my head, I'm like, did he read the script? Like, it's hilarious. Anyway, back to reality. I think my personal opinion is that he waits until this stuff is done, man, until it's done. Like, you know, because you're living on the same roof, you start dating someone. And if they don't want, say, you know, if they if they do start to like you and, and maybe even fall in love with you within a few months, you know, six months, you know, there's no time frame on falling in love. People do it right away. People do it, you know, within, you know, a year, whatever it is. But if he's it's not fair to the other person for him to still be living in the same house with his wife. It's just not fair. I don't think so, but that's my opinion. Other people, you know, everyone's got a fucking opinion. 
Well, I agree that it's not fair. I, I, I agree that, you know, it's funny because the way you put that is, is, is not, um, see, I am the guy that would generally go into um, a date going, hey, here you go. This is this. This is this. I deal with this. I deal with this. I deal with it because I don't want somebody to find this stuff out later. I want them to know going into something that that and maybe not the first date, but in the mm-hmm. first couple com- like there's there's fundamental things to me that I think need to be talked about. However, the way you put it makes me rethink that whole strategy. And and the two things I got from that, the first thing I got from that is um yeah, there's tell so everybody knows we have a story and mm-hmm. I think if you're honest and transparent, you know, as far as you need to go, um then then you're fine. Like get mm-hmm. to know that person and if there are things that you would tell somebody that are fundamentally going to probably have somebody go, "I don't know if that's for me," then I think that's kind of a sign that you're not ready to date. So it's funny that you said because my mind, because I was unhealed for so long um, and dating unhealed for so long that, you know, six months ago, I would have said to you, well, no, you need to tell everybody everything. But now that I think about it, no, you're right. Like if you're not if you're in a place where you have to tell people these these everything negative about you and all of your shortcut, all of the things that you need to work on, you're not ready to date. You're not ready to date yet. I agree with you 100%. Here's the deal, man. This is how I think. This is what my thought is, is that you, there's there's a time and a place for everything, right? You don't have to divulge every single thing to the person that you're dating, right? Because dating, the, the you know, just the connotation of dating means you're getting to know someone. You're taking your time with it. You're going out to the movies or the dinners or you're having a drink somewhere, whatever it is. That's time to get to know someone to see if you want to divulge more information to the person. You know, you look, the last thing I'd want is that, you know, hypothetically say I'm not married. I go out on a date, say third date. I don't know. I don't know if this is long term or not. Third date. I like this person. She seems into me. I start rattling off all my, you know, my childhood trauma, right? My relationship with my father, my, all this stuff. Next thing I know, we're not seeing each other anymore, and this person's walking around with all the information I just gave her. Why would I want that? Yeah, yeah, I never really thought of it like that because to me, well, I I mean, you can go as deep as you want with another human being, but, like, there are certain things that you need to tell somebody, you know, if you have kids or what your arrangement is with that. Of course, Or, you know, like, so I get that. But, yeah, no, you're right. You're 100% right. And it's funny, too, because I look at that and – brings me to the thought of where we are when we enter the world and i don't know if we've talked about this in previous podcasts i know we've talked about it previously how i find that women leave a relationship they do the work on themselves they take Mm -hmm. the time they heal and then us as men we just dive right back into it this was episode 18 we talked it was a great yeah yeah. of course and and it and it's coming up again because i'm starting to see well me i'm dating differently now i've i've been i've been getting to know somebody slowly and organically Mm -hmm. and authentically and it's mind-blowingly awesome like it's it's there's no pressure it's so so good good. Mm -hmm. and we're not like we're we're just getting to know each other and we're taking our time and and we check in and we talk about it and that's all that it is like we're becoming friends we're learning about each other before like you just Mm -hmm. said we make the decision if we want to go down that road because what happens and what's happened to me in the past is i go two feet in they go two feet in you get lost in the words you're saying because you love the idea of somebody but you don't know if they're going to be right for you and then when you're like you realize that 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 um when you realize that they're not the right one for you you've just broke somebody's fucking heart and vice versa they've you know yeah and vice versa so so basically okay so this is what i wanted to kind of tie in with what we're talking about right now is that so in today's society, in the world, we are a all or nothing right now, right? We go to, we're on social media. We want likes right away. We want, we want views right away, downloads, clicks. We want, we want fast food. We want, fa- we want everything right here, right now. We got Amazon, same day delivery if you pay over $35 for, for something. So we have all this stuff, and yet we're trying to juggle that mindset, right, with, with something as kind of delicate 
as what we're talking about, which is dating, right? When you're younger, dating is a kind of kind of like a speed date. It's just kind of like uh, it's kind of like I don't know, like the luge, you know, like getting on the luge. <laughs> but when you get older, it's like, hold on a sec. Yeah, it's slower. It's like graceful skiing on like a slalom. It's like we we have to slow down and we have to process information that we're taking in from the other person correct because inside the information that this person is giving you be it a male or a female there are flags there are either green flags or they're red flags you have to pay attention to these things especially mm -hmm. if you're going into a new relationship with a child or children especially if those children are still minors now if your kids are grown up and they're moved away and everything you're, you're that is do whatever the fuck you want to do. That's fine. Whatever. Say, yeah, I got kids, but they're out of the house. But in your case, you know, you have a nine-year-old uh, daughter, you know, that you have uh, part-time. And it's like, so, yeah. So you have to just look for flags inside the stuff that people say. In the words that people use, there are flags in any relationship. Yeah, you know what's funny, too, is that last night I, I was having a conversation with a good friend of mine, somebody I've known for over 20 years that's going yeah. through, you know, like – heartache right now and they're going through a bunch of shit so they reached out and we had a chat and the one thing i say is that when we and i learned this recently is when we learn to love ourselves we stop caring about all the dreams and the goals that we have so if you if you you know you you might have the i might have the dream to 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 have my own talk show one day i want to be the next oprah i don't i'm just using a, yeah. a fake thing i think i still could be oprah if i tried hard enough you want to be oprah keep going i could be oprah let's just stay there for a second anyways so yeah i just okay. you have your dream you, you have your yeah. dreams and you have yeah. your goals <laughs> of course but when we sit and we focus on those dreams and goals like you talk about social media people want likes and they want more follows and they want more followers and and they want that all they they want sponsors and they want to be paid and they want to be influencers and i'm finding out that most of these people and i'm calling you out if you're one of them they buy these fake followers so that it looks for the optics so it looks like i they can't have followers. stand that but I you can tell that. yeah you can tell people you can tell if you have thirty thousand followers and your mm -hmm. social media has 40 likes or 50 likes on a post you bought followers so yeah they should know that by now they should know and that's yeah. not authentic yeah. No, it's and not. and and the reason you're doing that is because you're looking for a validation that does not exist. And the yeah. validation that you need before anything else can validate you is your own validation. And the only way you can get your own validation is through self-love. And the only way you can get to self-love is by believing in yourself. So True. by lying to yourself with all that other shit, that's why your dreams are taking so long to come to fruition. The second the second that I changed the way I viewed myself, the second the way I looked at myself in the mirror differently was the second that all of the things I have ever dreamt about in my life have, came, have come to fruition. Everything, everything that I have dreamt about over the last 15 or 20 years is coming to fruition now solely because I chose to view myself differently. And yes, being friends with you is one of them now. Well, I love you for saying that, Wayne, and I love you. Here's the yeah. thing. I agree with you 100%. Here's here's something I'd like to say. I just want to touch back on the whole buying followers thing because it 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 it's one of my like it triggers me, okay? So you know who else does that, right? Big celebrities. Big celebrities buy followers. They may get 300,000, 400,000 on their own, which that's amazing. But then they'll go, "I want a million." Buy another 500,000. I mean, it's, they all do it. I don't do it. You don't do it. Uh, my wife doesn't do it. People I know that, I, you know, close to me, that I don't think I haven't seen that happen. Uh, but I see it all the time, and it's fucking ridiculous. It's, 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 it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's Love yourself. Don't. Love yourself, man. What you were just saying is fucking perfect. It's the truth. It's spend the truth. Your, spend your money. If you're going to go spend $100 on 10,000 followers or whatever it costs, because we'll get messages in our in our podcast. Um, we get them all the time. DMs to take that money and go do something for you. 
go get yeah. your nails done go get your hair done if go get a if you're if you're a, a dude go get a hot shave go get your balls the, tightened get your what well, because some guys have really saggy nuts. If they want to tighten, they can get them tightened. How do you get your balls tightened? I don't know, but I'm sure there's a way. No, there's no way. Oh. Botox, maybe? Botox your nuts? What? I've heard of it, dude. You've like, never heard of Botox. Dude, Liberace used to Botox his nutsack. What would it do? Like, just tighten it up? Like I want to say that that's a it? fabrication. I'm not saying that because that is not true about Liberace. Although, if I had to guess, I would guess that he would have been the one to do it. Go ahead. <laughs> what? Um. <laughs> Alex. Wayne. I'm going to Google this when we're done. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. I'm going to look for ball plastic surgery. Would it be plastic surgery? It would Why be, am I saying uh, it like that? Plastic surgery? Is it ball plastic surgery? Well, every time... See, here's the funny thing. I, you have a lot of tells. Everyone needs to know this about Wayne. Oh, He's got a lot God. of tells. So on his face, you know, you could see certain movements or, like, or sounds that he makes with his voice. He's got a lot of tells, right? And I'll tell you this one. Every time I bring up ball sacks, he talks a little more lighter right everyone knows it wayne everyone well, because knows it. i have i don't have a ball set i have a ball pouch like i have a little like i have a pouch like my my um region down there okay resembles like you know oops i accidentally put um the sweater in warm water and then dried it in the dryer <laughs> <laughs> ZenAF.TV. TV. We just talk about stuff. Mm.